If you want to lock applications on your iPhone using Face ID, Touch ID, or a passcode, there's never been a better way to do it on the iPhone. So in this video, we're going to go through the new method of locking applications on your iPhone using Face ID or a passcode. Now keep in mind, this only works on iPhones running iOS 16.4 and later. Okay, so I showed a method of locking applications on your iPhone back in 2021, where you'd have to use the clock application and the timer in order to lock your applications. And while that does still work, the problem with that method is that you cannot set another timer because it's used to lock applications. But now, thanks to iOS 16.4 adding a new shortcut, we don't have to rely on the timer. So let's get into this new little hack for locking applications. Okay, so first up, let's go ahead and open up the Shortcuts application. If you don't have this on your device, just go into the App Store and search for Shortcuts. It is a free application, but it should be on your device by default. Now in here, we're going to go to the Automations tab at the bottom. From here, we're going to tap on the plus in the top right hand corner and create personal automation. From here, we want to go down until we see app for application. Once we tap on that, make sure that is opened is selected. That is the default, but just make sure you don't change that to is closed because we want this action to be performed when the application is opened. So now next to app, you can see a little choose button right there. If we tap on that, we get all of our applications that we have on our device. This is where you select the applications that you want to be locked. So for example, I'm going to lock, let's just say my messages, my email and my photos application. So once we have those three selected, you can select as many as you want, but you can see once you tap on done, it shows any of three applications. Now let's go ahead and tap on next. And now we have the section where we're going to add our actions. So tap on add action. And from here, we just want to tap and search for lock screen. So once you type in lock S, you will see at the top under scripting, we have lock screen. So go ahead and tap on lock the screen. And this is all we're going to add for now. There's going to be a more advanced way to do this in a second but we're just going to stick to this for now and tap on next and then at the bottom we have ask before running you want to turn that off so we do not want to be prompted before running this automation so we're going to tap on don't ask and tap on done and now we are done with that shortcut automation for now and now we do have some variations coming up here in a minute but let's test it out for now and make sure it is working so we're going to try to open up the photos application and you can see it kicks us out and sends us to the lock screen where we need to input our face id touch id or passcode and i'll try it again on the mail application and it does the same thing now of course this is not completely foolproof because if somebody had your passcode they would be able to get into your app applications no problem and you're not able to lock the shortcuts application so they could go in there and delete the shortcut automation or turn that off however you know i would assume that 99.9% .9 of people that you're doing this for are not going to know that this is really a thing and they won't know how to disable this and they also won't know your password now we can also take this a step further by having this automation only work when you are not connected to your home wi-fi network so essentially what this will do is not lock you out of your applications you as the iphone owner you will not be locked out but everybody else will so if we go into the automation here and then go to do we're going to add in a new little action here for network so we're going to search for network and you want to go to get network details and from here you don't need to touch that we're going to tap on if right here right below that if you don't see that you could always search for it but we're going to tap on if and now it's going to say if the network details do or do not or is or is not you have all these to choose from then a certain action will or will not happen now if this is confusing i will have a shortcuts tutorial and updated shortcuts tutorial coming out soon because i know this application be, can be pretty overwhelming for a good majority of people and my last tutorial on shortcuts was like three years ago so i will do an updated one very soon but anyways what we want to do here is set this to is not so now we have this blank text field right here and what we want to do is type in our ssid so your wi-fi name should be going in here and this is case sensitive so you need to type in exactly 
what your SSID or your network name is. And that is the same network name that you can find in settings, Wi-Fi. It's just this right here. You need to make sure that it is the exact same and it is again, case sensitive. So once I've inputted my SSID, we're going to move the lock screen below this. So we're going to move lock screen right here, just tap and hold, and we're going to do this right here. So now what the shortcut is doing, the actions are doing here is the very first thing it's doing is checking my Wi-Fi that I'm connected to right now. So my Wi-Fi on my iPhone, if it's connected to this right here, this text, if the network details match BBSN 5G, it's going to lock the screen. It's going to run that shortcut that we just set up right there. And that's why we need to have locked the screen below this. Otherwise it's going to lock the screen first and then get the Wi-Fi details later. That's not what we want to do. So this is how you want it to have it set up and the end. So now we're going to go back and we're going to tap on done. And now we're going to try the exact same thing again while we're on that Wi-Fi network and watch this. I'm going to be able to go into these applications freely, no locking, even though the automation is still set up. It's still running right there. And keep in mind, you can always go in here and add more applications or disable more applications if you would like to. And also, I, I just thought about this. There's another way that we can go about locking applications as well. So basically, if you maybe handed your phone to somebody and you already had an application opened, you can change this to is closed. Like on the fly, you can change this to just is closed. And now when we do that, we're going to go into an application like the mail application. So if you wanted somebody to stay and just one application, you didn't want them, you know, going back to the home screen and trying to go into other applications, you can hand them your phone with this automation set up on is closed. And then if they try to go out and go into another application, watch this. Well, I'm on my Wi-Fi network right now. So let me go out of that. I forgot that I had that set up. So anyway, we're going to go into mail here. And now when we try to go out of mail, it's going to lock our screen. As you can see right there, it's going to keep from people, you know, kind of going into other applications and snooping. So you can set that up as a separate automation or you can just change it on the fly like I did. But I think most people are going to stick to is open. That way, anytime an application is opened, it will lock the screen. Now, something else I wanted to show you as an alternate method, and it's not entirely the same thing as locking applications and you don't use the shortcuts app at all, but you can also do this if you want to have some added privacy on your device. So go into your settings and then go to screen time. And from here, you want to go to content and privacy restrictions, make sure to turn this on and then go into allowed applications. And then from here, you're going to see the applications that are allowed or not allowed. And the selection is not great. You're not going to really have your photos your messages or third party applications, but I'll show you how to do that in a second. But from here, this is really cool because if I disabled mail, for example, and we go back to my home screen, you can see that the mail icon is gone. So like you're not even going to be able to search for mail, for example, it's just completely gone off of the device. So it actually showed up in search right there, but you still are not able to open it. So there we go. Just had to refresh. And now you can see that I cannot even go into mail even from the spotlight search. So that's pretty cool. We're going to turn that back on. And now we're going to go back into something else here for content restrictions. So if you go into content restrictions and then down to apps, you want to set this to either four plus or nine plus. And the reason for that is because your social media applications, for example, usually require users to be 12 or 13 and above. So if you're only allowing applications that are nine plus, that means all your social media applications are not going to be allowed on the device. So if we go back, you can already see that it removed pretty much all of my social media applications so like any of your dating apps and if your Instagrams your Snapchats, all of those will be removed when you select this to four plus or nine plus, for example. And then you have multiple other things you can do down here as well, like with your music, your web content, explicit language, all of that you can change here as well. Now, of course, in an ideal world, you're going to be able to like haptic press on a device and lock it. Like if I wanted to lock the weather application, for example, I'd be able to haptic press right here and maybe below remove application, there will be a way to just lock the application on the fly. But for now, you know, this is about as good as it gets when it comes to locking applications.
restrictions on your iPhone. And by the way, just a warning, if you do the content restrictions where you don't allow applications, it does not put your home screen back to how it was before. Like all my applications that I had on here are now just sitting here in the app library and I'll have to move them back. So that's a little annoying. So if you do do that, just know that that will happen to you as well. But anyways, I hope this video helped you out. If it did, I would appreciate a thumbs up on this video. Also make sure to subscribe for more iPhone tricks just like this one. But anyways, guys, thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon.